Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's bird video. We're going to have a look at where the next 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. So day 10 is going to take us to the 1st of October. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we're around a couple of weeks. I have a look at CFS E2 at the end of the video. The next four weeks take us into second half of October. I'll get on that for you in a second. Just say about the first video we released was our 7 a.m. Uh, forecast. We also released um, the EC 38 slash 6 weeks we had for UK and Europe as well. So check Check out those two if you'd like uh, to do that. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing this. Uh, for you those, please like, share, subscribe uh, also. The uh, third winter update in two parts is complete now. So we released part one of the third winter update on Sunday. Part two was released uh, last night at 6 p.m. So if you have not seen that yet, then uh, check out, you know, uh, winter update in two parts. And uh, yeah, that's the third update complete. We go on then next weekend to uh, the fourth update, part one, uh, released on Sunday and part two uh, next Monday as well. So uh, we're cracking on with the winter updates now. Uh, I've got to say thank you so much to our latest channel member. Uh, so thank you so much to Ghosty for becoming a channel member for Gaz Weather. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Ghosty, uh, for becoming uh, a Gaz WeatherViz channel member. If you'd like to become a channel member, we've got over 60 channel members. So thank you to all of our channel members. If you'd like to become a channel member for Gaz Weather, all you need to do is come to Gaz WeatherViz YouTube, YouTube homepage, click the join button. It'll take you through to another page to see what benefits you get for becoming a, a channel member. And you sign up on that page as well. So uh, you help me to support the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to, to all of our channel members. And a special thank you uh, to go, Steve. Thank you so much to our patrons and also our PayPal donors as well. Um, it's unbelievable. The support we get is absolutely incredible. We've only got to put on 15 subscribers now to get to 12.1k. The subs moved very quickly yesterday. So our first 100 within you know, 12,000 is, uh, is, uh, is imminent. It's going to happen quite soon. If you aren't yet subbed to the channel, please give us a sub and tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Right, let's start off in Tropical Atlantic then. So we've got four interest areas. We've got the Shadow X up here, which is uh, the remnants of Odette. Might reanimate over the next couple of days, but then we'll weaken towards the weekend. We don't have to worry too much about that one. We've got Tropical Storms, Peter and Rose just here. Peter is giving maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and Rose maximum sustained at 45 miles per hour. They're both going to weaken to Tropical Depressions. In the next few days. And then we've got this yellow, this orange uh, X down here. This one down there. Uh, that is disturbance one with a 50% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and an 80% chance, very high chance, in the next five days. If the model is correct, that could well become our next hurricane. It could become a major hurricane uh, into uh, next week. So that is going to be one to watch. In the coming days, that could turn into a, a really, uh, really significant uh, hurricane and uh, storm. So uh, that will be where the interest is, I think, with that uh, disturbance area there in the next few days. And we'll keep a close eye on it, of course. CT continues to gradually decline. The in temperature is now standing at 17.1. That is still over 3 degrees above average even now. That's provisional to yesterday to the 20th of September. Latest update from uh, my good friend Simon, a.k.a. Global Warming at the Weather Out Forum, is that uh, it's going to finish up. The projection is that it will finish up at 15.99. So that will be rounded up to uh, like 16 degrees. That will be rounded up to 16.0 if that's where it lands. Um, that's increased a little bit from yesterday's project projection due to the fact that warm conditions are, extend are extended now. Uh, through the weekend um, so uh, it just does not want to cool down uh, which means we may in the end come away with a 16 celsius ct september haven't been all that many of, of those only six um since 1659 all followed by mild winters i hasten to add um, but more about that when we get into the <laughs> into the uh, winter updates so we look at the september data uh, of course, but uh, but yeah, 16 degrees could be where we finish up uh, with CT for this uh, September. Very, very warm uh, month, um, but under the, the uh, warmest September on record, which in 2006 at 16.8. Big changes could be on the way next week, but although, having said that, we said that about this week, and of course, summer is extended on again for another week, so 
<laughs> Here we go again. Uh, GFS, up rare temperature and precipitation on samples look like this. We're at Preston today. Uh, another suggested location for this part of the video. If you'd like to have your local town or city feature within this part of the video, please let us know uh, through uh, the comments. We're happy to feature your local town, city or location uh, when we can. Uh, right, so as I said, like this time last week, it looked like this week would be the transition uh, to autumn. That's been delayed. It's been pushed back by another week. Now we have a transition to autumn next week. So upper air temperatures are looking warm through the rest of this week and into weekend. Then clearly there is this quite significant and relatively dramatic drop in the upper air temperature taking place next week. Becomes much cooler uh, next week with the ensembles. And then just generally stays either at or under uh, average really right way through into first week of October. Clearly lots of precipitation there as well. You'll notice that, I'm sure. So starting off really dry over the next uh, two or three days, gradually turning a bit more unsettled over weekend. But it's really early next week that the deluge starts. And that is a deluge. Uh, you know, uh, there is uh, lots, lots, uh, lots and lots of precipitation spikes there indicating a very wet uh, final couple of days of September and then into the first week of October, looking much cooler, much wetter through the first week of October, um, genuinely autumnal. Now, how seriously do we take that, though? Because this time last week, we were talking about autumn descending this week. Obviously, now we're having uh, another week that's an extended, uh, you know, extended summer. Um, so the switch now is sort of next week to, to autumnal conditions. Will that verify? Will that happen? Um, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Will we have the dissension of autumn uh, next week or, or will it get put back again uh, by the models? Uh, we will have to wait and see. But uh, but there we go. That's what the upper air temperatures are showing today. I'm not going to predict anything because uh, it's getting a bit silly now uh, that every week it looks like the following week will be the dissension of autumn and it just doesn't happen. So uh, we're just going to take it day by day and see whether we ever actually get there. Temperature anomalies on the 21st, 29th of September. This shows it, doesn't it? Going to be uh, warmer than average in the weekend. And look at this. Yes, surprise, surprise. Precipitation anomalies from the 21st uh, to 29th of September. Going to be drier than average, except across the far west of Scotland. So it's a case, once again, of rinse, repeat um, with that. Uh, this is later from that from EarthNorthSchool.net. It does show that things are getting livelier in the Atlantic. There's a very, very deep area of low pressure around Iceland and Greenland, and that's the remnants of Odette uh, just there. So clearly things are getting much more livelier in the Atlantic, but at the moment high pressure is still managing to fend off all of those areas of low pressure and what looks like a pretty vigorous jet stream as well, all of the lows away to the north and west along if the jet stream as well and the high pressure continues, will the high pressure relent? Will it give way uh, by next week? That is the question. Right, so let's go through uh, the generic charts then. This is how the UK Met is looking. Should I put webcam back on? Why not? This is how the UK Met is looking for midnight on Friday. High pressure still clinging on by its fingertips to uh, the south. Uh, low pressure low around Greenland and Iceland. High pressure is still there, but declining a little bit by midnight on Saturday. That Sunday, further decline of high pressure, low pressure deepening in the Atlantic. And by Monday, midnight Monday, in comes the low, breaks down the high, and, uh, and so then we're into a more unsettled spell of weather as we go into the early part of next week, particularly so for more northern and western areas. This is as far as we get to with the UK map. This is how the GFS midnight rain is looking again. Friday, high pressure is clinging on by its fingertips to itself. It's turning more unsettled up in the north. Going through to Saturday and Sunday again, the high pressure gradually easing away as low pressure deepens to west of Scotland. It's really from Sunday to Monday that the low pressure pushes in. That probably brings a band of quite a heavy rain eastwards across the country. Um, and obviously much cooler temperatures as well. And then the rest of next week, just looking very unsettled then, uh, with low pressure never far away, and a lot cooler as well, with winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. By day 10, we're just beginning to see that Azores High starting to reach back into south-southwest again. That is the first day of October. Uh, and as we go through the extending range, actually the high pressure really starts to build through the country and goes up to Scandinavia. Uh, again, so you finish up with a midnight GFS run, pulling in an easterly wind. 
And that can be quite a cool easy wind as well. If we start getting easies in October, they'll start getting a chill to them. Uh, you know, as the content just naturally starts to uh, cool down. So uh, we're back at a high pressure by the end of the GFS midnight run, 7th of October, with an easterly wind. But it certainly isn't a hot easterly, that quite a cool easy. Notice this very, very deep over low pressure. See, here. that's the remains of a uh, hurricane uh, or tropical storm close to Newfoundland again. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that's the orange X that I showed you at the start of the video, that disturbance area. Right, so that's the midnight GFS run done. Let's have a look at the 6 there, which is the very latest. Again, on Friday, high pressure is clinging on by its fingertips to the south. Low pressure is developing, though, to the north. Over the weekend, we gradually break down the high. So from Sunday through to Monday, in comes probably quite an active cold front, actually. Could bring a band of heavy rain across the country Sunday to Monday. And is followed by a cool uh, west to north westerly wind. Into mid of next week, looks quite unsettled and cool again. This is uh, Wednesday, 29th of September. Big changes, autumnal, you know, descent. that's autumn descended. Um, that's supposed to happen this week, though. So whether that happens next week, we should wait and see. But uh, the model output today is suggesting that autumn descends, like, over the weekend and into next week. And, uh, and so that's what's meant to happen this week. It's next week now. Uh, we'll see whether we ever uh, actually get there. By day 10, with the uh, GFS 6Z, we've got high pressure trying to get back into the south. Low pressure is away to the northwest. We're looking rather cool and showery there. In more extended range, gradually we start to build up some higher pressure to our south and southeast, beginning to return to more of a southerly flow. So getting quite warm through the first week of October there, although nowhere near as hot as yesterday's very, very hot outlier GFS 6 So it's 6 a today is trying to get back to that kind of pattern, but, but it's nowhere near to the same extent. I'll just very quickly turn off the webcam in case I'm obscuring the view. So there's below pressure just there. That again is that uh, X hurricane, or might still be a hurricane at that point, close to the Azores. Um, certainly tropical storm. Uh, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, that's the orange disturbance area that I just uh, showed you a few minutes ago. So it does look so the model output wants to lift that up into the North Atlantic uh, through the first week of October. Right, GM is looking like this. Uh, high pressure again on the decline, but still hanging on on Friday. If you enjoyed the video, by the way, please smash the like button and make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. Uh, drop a comment, let us know what you think. Um, so high pressure still clinging on by its fingertips through the uh, end of week into weekend, gradually easing away to our east. This is a little bit different, more like yesterday's 6Z actually with GFS. Low pressure out to west by side of next week, high pressure to our east, drawing up what looks like it could be a very warm southerly. And then the low pressure comes in, cuts off that warm southerly. So obviously turns much more unsettled, heavy rain moving in from the Atlantic, maybe even thunder involved in that, and uh, just turning cooler and, and more unsettled by sort of day 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, with the GM. And then the ECM looks like this, again we have high pressure coming on by its fingertips to the south on a Friday, high pressure gradually declining over the weekend, it's not really until uh, Sunday to Monday that we bring this cold front in off the Atlantic, Band of heavy rain pushes through, and then that sets us up for what looks like a very unsettled and autumnal spell next week with low pressure dominating weather. Actually, the low pressure is focused on England and Wales, so that will bring a little bit of a deluge potentially through the middle of next week to England and Wales. Winds are in from the east, courtesy of Scandinavian High. That's our look with the ECM as we get to day 10. Cool and wet, really, for much of uh, England and Wales. Anyway, drier for Scotland with winds in from the east. That would be quite a cool easterly wind as well. This is a rainfall forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. A lot of dry weather to come away from north and west Scotland over the next uh, few days. But as we run on into next week, we find eventually they get, uh, we get this band of rain uh, pushing through. So uh, that brings a band of heavier rain uh, across the country uh, early next week. And then beyond that, we go to what looks like a very wet spell, especially focused on England and Wales with loads of heavy rain uh, being drawn in on those what would be quite cool uh, easterly winds. And the rain is again particularly focused on more southern and eastern areas, interestingly. Right, let's have a look at the upside of the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to the first day of October. 20 members of the ECM Ensembles, including the control run, have high pressure to our east 
uh, north and uh, west. There's probably some lower pressure through here. Uh, 15, including the operational run, has a trough of low pressure over and particularly to the south of the country. High pressure blocking to our north and northwest. Winds would be in from the east uh, with that. Uh, and the low pressure will bring quite a bit of rain, particularly to the south. Uh, uh, we've also got, let's get rid of that, we've also got nine members of the ECM ensembles uh, with quite a deep area of low pressure over top of the UK in combination with the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and some Greenland blocking. And seven, again, with high pressure to our north, and low pressure is over slightly to west country. Again, that looks really quite unsettled. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Uh, this get us to the 6th of October. 26 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure taking over from Scandinavia. So that's going to be turning drier, of course. Uh, and we'll have winds in from the east. And they won't be overly warm easterly, as I wouldn't have thought. They could even be having a little bit of a chill to them. And then 25 have high pressure more towards our west with some lower pressure in over Scandinavia that might bring the wind in from the north. So it looks like the unsettled spell, if it does actually materialise, and after what's happened this week, we wait and see about that, but it does look as though if the unsettled spell does show up next week, it will probably be relatively short-lived. As we go through the first week of October, we can probably expect to find our way to back to high pressure again, albeit... Um, Probably, uh, you like a cooler uh, variety of high-pressure cooler version. Uh, CFSB2 last week, so we saw 500 millibar heights breaking down to meet beers. The first week beer takes us from the 21st to the 27th of uh, September. The coming week will have high pressure away to our west. Low pressure will be to our north. Winds will be in from west. So the high pressure clinging on to the south, but it is gradually being eroded and broken down by low pressure, uh, that's to the north. And that takes us through to week two, which is an unsettled week. It's 28th of September, 4th of October. Low pressure is properly uh, in control of weather in this week. So obviously that is a much more unsettled, uh, very end to September and start to October. Uh, not for all that long, though. Week three is the 5th through to the 11th of October. Already the low pressure is trying to get pushed back northwards again as heights begin to rise. Um, to our south, and that begins to turn, particularly southern areas, drier, and probably turning warmer again as well, with winds coming in from the south-southwest. And then week four is the 12th through to the 18th of October, with low pressure again to the north, around Greenland and Iceland, high pressure to the south, and into the south. Winds are sort of flat and westerly. Could be a bit unsettled for Scotland, but for most parts of Ireland, England and Wales, we're under that high pressure, so still a lot of dry weather with that, and probably reasonably warm conditions as well, I would have thought. So uh, maybe, you know, a relatively dry October coming up after a very dry September. We shall see. If you've enjoyed the uh, video, then please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You'll be able to see future weather content if you do that. Tell your friends and family to subscribe. Thank you so much. And drop a comment. Let us know uh, what you think about this and all of our videos. We have only got to put on 1515 subscribers now to get our first 100 within 12k. To get to 12 1,100 subscribers, and then we should push on to 12,200 subscribers, and then, you know, on and on, on and hopefully we'll get 13k uh, before the end of the year, that'd be very nice if we could do that, wouldn't it? So, please give us a sub if you aren't yet subbed to the channel, thank you so much. Right, that's it for today's video, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, just say what's coming up tomorrow, we'll have 7am uh, forecast, we will also tomorrow have the USA forecast, also on a Wednesday, I think we might have a look at the JMA seasonal model tomorrow as well. Um, so that could be quite an interesting watch. That will go, uh, you know, uh, through October, November, December, I think, with that one. Uh, and uh, also uh, 10 to 14 down with all of the usual features as well. So a lot going on on the channel tomorrow. Keep checking back for more. But for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.